Hello there, this is the Bookkeeper Master on YouTube. Welcome to part two of this free depreciation basics course. In part one, the previous video, I covered the very basics of depreciation, what depreciation is, what assets are, etc. In this video onward, I'm going to show you how to calculate and account for depreciation. And this video, I hope you're excited, is all about straight line depreciation. So there are two methods. There are two depreciation methods. And these methods are used to calculate the depreciation. There is the straight line method, which is what will be covered in this video. And there's the reducing balance method. Two methods, they have similarities, but they are also very different. I would say straight line depreciation is a bit more difficult to calculate than reducing balance. That's just my own personal opinion. And we'll be covering straight line depreciation in this video. Now, if we want to depreciate an asset, if we need to depreciate an asset, we have to use some sort of method to calculate the depreciation. And that's why we have these methods, straight line depreciation and reducing balance. So what is straight line depreciation? First of all, to calculate straight line depreciation, we need three important bits of information. Number one, we need the purchase price of the asset. So if the asset is a, a computer, we need to know the price of that computer. What was paid for that computer? It could be a thousand dollars, euros, pounds. It doesn't matter. A thousand. It could be that the business has purchased a motor vehicle, a van, a desk, we need the purchase price. First of all, you need the purchase price to account for the asset, to show on the balance sheet, to show in the set of accounts. But you also need the purchase price to calculate the straight line depreciation. So that's the first thing that you'll need. The next thing you'll need is the useful life of the asset. Now, what does that mean, the useful life? It means how long the asset will be in the business, in the company, within the entity. So as an example, the business may have purchased a new car, which cost 35,000. And the business is expected to have the car, to have the vehicle for five years. It then plans to sell the vehicle. So the purchase price will be 35,000. The use for life will be five years. The business may have purchased a new office desk for 500. And the desk is expected to last 10 years. So the purchase price is 500. And the use for life is 10 years. The last bit of information we need, the last figure is the salvage value. That's the estimated value of the asset at the end of its useful life. So the office desk, which we paid 500 for, how much will that be worth in 10 years? And it could be zero. It could be the desk is going to be worth zero in 10 years. So that would be our salvage value. And quite often, the salvage value is zero. If the business plans to sell these assets, at the end of their useful life, then there likely will be a salvage value which isn't zero. For example, if we go back to the vehicle that the company has purchased for 35000 and it's going to be within the business for five years, what is the salvage value going to be in five years? It's likely not going to be zero. So you need an estimated value at the date of disposal at the date that the asset will no longer be in the business. So that's the three 
bits of information that you need, the purchase price, the useful life in years, and the salvage value. Any questions, let me know below. Once we have that information, then this is the formula. This is how we calculate straight line depreciation. So the purchase price minus the salvage value. So calculate that first. Divided by the useful life in years gives us our straight line depreciation. And I've got an example down here for you and there's more examples to come. So if you're a bit confused right now, don't worry. There are examples coming that will make things crystal clear. And as always, if you have any questions, just ask below and I'll do my best to help you. You can also watch this course on my website and there's more information on the website which can make it easier to understand. Okay, so let's say we've purchased a desk. Let's go back to the desk example. We've purchased a desk for a thousand. Once again, this could be in any currency, euros, dollars, pounds, krona doesn't matter a thousand the business has purchased a desk for a thousand the desk is forecast to last nine years in the business so that's nine years that's the useful life what's the value of the desk going to be the estimated value in nine years time a hundred so we do a thousand minus a hundred so the purchase price minus the salvage value, the estimated salvage value, divide by the nine years gives us 100 a year. So 1,000 minus 100 is 900. 900 divided by nine years is 100 a year. So this straight line depreciation, the depreciation charge that we need to account for, is going to be 100 a year for nine years. At the end of that nine years, the desk will have a value of 100, the salvage value. Any questions, let me know below. Now, this straight line depreciation, what I do like about it is the amount is actually fixed. So it's 100 a year, every year. It doesn't change. That's different with uh, reducing balance. With reducing balance, the amount changes every year. It's variable which can make it slightly more complicated. I like how straight line depreciation is a fixed amount, 100 a year. So let's have a look at some more examples which should make this more clear. So example one, we have the office desk again. An office desk is purchased for 800. It is expected to last eight years. That's the useful life, eight years. 800 is the purchase price. And then be disposed of for nil. That's the salvage value. So with the purchase price of 800, we have the useful life of eight years, and we have the salvage value of nil. So applying the formula, which is showing down the bottom here, purchase price minus salvage value, that's going to be 800 minus zero. So 800 minus zero gives us 800. We then divide that by the useful years, which is eight, that gives us 100. So once again, that's 100 a year, the same as this example before. But the purchase price was higher and the amount of years was higher, but it's still 100 a year. This time we have a motor vehicle is purchased for 25,000. That's the purchase price. It is expected to last five years. That's the useful value. And then be sold for 10,000. That's the salvage value. So the purchase price minus the salvage value divide by the useful years. So that's 25,000 minus 10,000 gives us 15,000. Divide that by five is 3,000. So 3,000 every year will be posted to the accounts for five years. At the end of five years, the asset will show with a value of 10,000, which is the salvage value. But how do you post this to the accounts? How do you actually account for this? We've calculated the depreciation charge, the depreciation figure, but how do we actually post that to the accounts? Well, that will be covered 
in an upcoming video. In the next video, I will teach you the reducing balance method.